You're watching Cartel TV and I'm Jenny. Subscribe to the channel. Now we review a lot of new cars, obviously. But every now and then there's a car that even before we sit in it, I see it from the outside and already get excited. A perceivable knowing that this thing is going to be different. And this is one of those times. This is the absolutely all new Genesis GV60. An all electric SUV in its top of the power plant performance all wheel drive trim. In the words of Ned Flanders, mm-hmm, diddly diddly. Now there is so much to go through with this GV60, so buckle up, let's get started with the design. Just in case the GV60 wasn't strikingly different enough. We got set this Fiesta in Sao Paulo, lime green. The front appears fairly minimalist. Okay, not that minimalist when compared to the Tesla Model Y. Now there is some sleek, subtle design going on with the front of the GV60. Genesis have used a clamshell bonnet design that gently flows its way down to the stacked intelligent front lighting system there's that crest grille down the bottom, bulges along the sides and top, and all up there is a good sense of symmetry. It all works really well together. The side view best shows off what Genesis refers to as their athletic design. With that sloped coupe back, you can see the long wheelbase. It's 2,900 millimetres long. And sits on these stunning 21-inch alloys. The side also shows off stand-up features on the GV60. It's these super cool digital side mirrors. So gone is the traditional mirrors we're used to, and in their place, there are these side cameras which feed onto six-inch screens. The rear stays on theme with the twin tail lamps and those lovely bulges. Again, intricate simplicity when compared to the Tesla Model Y. The spoiler here on the GV60 is just more distinctive and the whole rear is just more fierce. Tesla's Model Series designs clearly share the same origins with each other. Almost too much the same going on for my liking. Honestly, this is a lot more up my alley. This really does have its uniqueness over other EVs. It's quite statement making. Now let's talk about what's powering this electric SUV. There's a choice of two powertrains and both are equipped with front and rear motors. The entry level GV60, referred to as simply all wheel drive or AWD. The front motor produces 74 kilowatts and 255 Newton meters, while the rear motor produces 160 kilowatts and 350 Newton meters. They combine to serve up a total of 234 kilowatts of power and 605 newton meters. This gets you from 0 to 100 in 5.5 seconds. Now that's fast. I mean, it's fast enough for most people. And then you have this all-wheel drive performance. It gives you 160 kilowatts and around 300 newton meters to power both the front and rear wheels. That's a combined output of 320 kilowatts of power. Huge numbers that propel this SUV from zero to 100 in 4.6 seconds. But here's the kicker, literally. There's this little green boost button on the steering wheel. That says boost. Oh yeah, I love me a boost button. Press this button and it bolts in more power from that battery to give you an even crazier performance. The boost enhancer stays activated for 10 seconds. With the boost button engaged, you get a combined output of 360 kilowatts of power and 700 newton meters of torque. That's a hell of a lot of power and torque, and they rocket this thing to 100 in just four seconds. Now that's fast. I'll get back to all these things when I talk about what it's like to drive. But for now, let's talk about charging and range. The battery is a 77.4 kilowatt battery. When fully charged, you get a WLTP range of 466 kilometers. Impressive. There's a 400 slash 800 multi-rapid charging system. It means that it's able to boost the voltage to reduce the charge times while still keeping it stable and safe. The standard charging time using a single phase charger, 220 volts at its maximum, 10.5 kilowatts will take you just under eight hours to get from 10 to 100%. Typically, that would be the charger you would have installed in the house. An overnight charger will allow you to have a fully charged car in the morning. In Adelaide, the fastest charger that I know of is this 50 kilowatt charger in the CBD. That is often out of service, but when it is working and not occupied by Teslas, it can charge the car from 10 to 80% in about 73 minutes. What the hell, Tesla drivers? I'm complaining because there's constantly empty Tesla charging spots. And yet the other generic ones are full of Teslas. And apparently there's about a 15 or 20 cent difference in the price per kilowatt. Now there are 350 kilowatt chargers out there, but the closest one to Adelaide is in Murray Bridge, which is kind of an interesting choice of location. Like, are we only catering to people driving to Melbourne and back? They will charge this GV60 from 10 to 80% in just 18 minutes. Wow, that is so impressive and so convenient. 
but that really doesn't help us at all, does it? Now, if we could just get a few of them here. Genesis are offering the choice of either a ChargeFox 5U subscription or an AC charger installed in your house included within the purchase price. There's an outdoor and indoor V2L feature. This means you have two power points to plug and power up appliances and devices. And now let's get to the driving experience. My first time sitting in it and driving it, it does take getting used to. It just feels very different. I mean, especially with these camera mirrors. And then when you go to drive it. I mean, the car does feel really big and you need to utilize all the tech available to you to make it feel more comfortable. But after you drive it for a while, you just get used to it. And then all of a sudden, you just don't notice them anymore and you actually really appreciate the upgrade from normal mirrors. The clarity of the screens is actually really good and you can angle the camera to set up a view that's ideal for you. Now also, I'm not sure if this is a bonus, but for nosy passengers, they always see exactly what you see on the screen. So it makes for enhanced backseat driving, I guess. We found with driving at night, the clarity is also fantastic. Now I have mentioned that cool boost feature which gives you Hulk mode for 10 seconds. But there is also the anti-boost. You have eco mode, which is common on most cars, not just EVs. But here, Genesis have done it differently. And by differently, I mean better. It's because it's not a traditional all-wheel drive, but what they are calling an e-all-wheel drive system. This lets you separate the front motor and the drive shaft, switching between rear-wheel drive and all-wheel drive. So you can have a much more economical mode for your day-to-day -day driving, but it is noticeable when you're in eco, you do lose quite a bit of that performance. Your torque drops from 605 to 350 newton meters. The overall driving experience in the GB60 is excellent. The low and evenly distributed weight of the battery means you stick to the road. Now it's very quiet in here, so alongside great insulation and the fact that there's no engine, Genesis have added active noise control. You've got the paddle shifters to control regen braking with. The regen braking is an excellent way for you to actively contribute to how economically you can drive. Now there are people out there like the producer's mum who won't buy an electric vehicle purely because they love the sound of a petrol engine. Well, Nina, in the GV60, you get a choice of three virtual driving sounds, which sync to the speed and accelerator inputs. They are a futuristic sound, a G engine sound, and an E motor sound. They're fairly subtle though. Now let's see if I can custom sound settings, master volume maximized. Standard. All right, let's see if it will if we'll go. Ready? Yeah! How do you like that, Nina? Kind of sounds like a ghost. <laughs> Ooh! Ooh! I'm a petrol engine! The interior is awesome. It draws a lot of similarities with the Hyundai Ioniq 5. You have the flat floor and the luxe white eco leather interior, which add to the feel of openness and space. And there's this vegan suede as well on the trims, which looks gorgeous, yet I am wondering how easily it cleans. Now, I just love this crystal looking sphere here. It looks and feels very quality and there's a light in there at nighttime as well. But what does it actually do? Well, when you turn the car on, it flips around and it's your drive selector. I mean, so I suppose it's a bit gimmicky, but I like it. I'm easily pleased. But let me make this clear. I'm also easily unimpressed. It looks like it should be telling me my future. It sits within the floating center console. Now to go along with the airy ambient feel, there's also a bunch of ambient lighting choices. There's the brilliant 12.3 inch instrument cluster, which as well as displaying your blind spots when indicating which we love, also has an inclusive navigation view. It's symmetrically placed next to the 12.3 inch multimedia screen. The screen is controllable via touch, handy, and this circular controller, which I love and it's easy to use. And you can turn off the screen by holding down the volume button, which I also appreciate. Sometimes it's just too much going on. You want to focus on the road. The driver's seat is 18 way adjustable and very loving. It hugs you when you turn the car on or sports mode to give you more support. Just like with Ionic 5, you can control the front passenger seat with these buttons here. Now, I was almost going to have a complaint about the placement of the USB if you want to have your phone plugged in for Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. Well, no, I don't get to complain here. Look, 
Press this little button here. But I do complain about something else. Now, one thing that I do kind of have a gripe about is the visibility in the back window. There is like that bar that goes across and splits the, the, the window. And yes, you have got all the cameras and things around, but it does obstruct the visibility a little bit. The door handles are flush and pop out when you approach the car. You can activate the remote parking assist and move the car forwards and backwards. And it's a pretty nice looking key. White and bling. There's a definite sense of luxury and ergonomics back here. You've got USB chargers, map pockets on both sides, this storage compartment, which is really deep. Um, cup holders armrest here, cup holders also on either side of the door there. Heated seats with three settings, uh, sunshades, and your own air control. And four hooks. Boot space is generous and comes with a cargo net as well as this underfloor storage area. Oh my, there is so much to mention, so I'm just going to mention my favourite safety features. Blind spot collision avoidance assist, blind spot view monitor, lane keeping assist, lane following assist, parking collision avoidance assist, rear cross traffic collision avoidance assist, safe exit assist, smart cruise control, surround view monitor including 3D surround view function. There's so many more than this, but you can check them out on the website if you're interested. We did want to keep this a review and not a feature film. The manufacturer's list price for the GV60 starts at $103,700 for the all-wheel drive and climbs to $110,700 for this performance all-wheel drive. That's a lot of coin, but then again, that's a lot of luxury and tech. Now this is a fully electric SUV and it has a clear level of refinement and technology that just does stand out from the rest. And that makes it one of the best cars that I've driven to date. Wow, yes, I just said that. Well done, Genesis. Thanks again for watching Cartel TV. So what do you think? Do you consider yourself an EV connoisseur? Have you checked out this car yet? We would love to know, especially you Tesla fanboys. Leave your comments below and we'll see you in the next review. Peace.